And now, back to Walt Disney Presents, right here on Disney. Here we are in Walt Disney's attic, where all your favorite Disney personalities live. Ironically, it's called the morgue. Really, it's alive with inspiration. Whenever an animator has a problem developing a character, you can't decide on facial expression or a bit of action, come here and see how another animator solved a similar problem in the past. When I came to working on the bear fight and the fox and the hound, I needed some reference on how to approach the, the dog attacking the, the bear and the fox attacking the bear. And so I went down to the morgue and checked out a Willie Reitherman scene from Lady in the Tramp. And Willie Reitherman was an expert in fast drama action. And this is really what I needed to, to incorporate into my bear scene in the Fox and the Hound. There was that moment of, of snarling quiet where the two adversaries were, were tensing and you hopefully didn't quite know what was going to happen. And then came the then came the the attack, and and uh, you always let the uh, let the bad guys attack first. <laughs> that gives you contrast from tension back to action. In a fight, if you drag it out too long, it loses its impact, and the timing is very important. <laughs> that really stood out to me was the attitude of Tramp and him having to have to fight his way back to the top. And this was the feeling that I wanted to get in my own animation where Todd and Copper were fighting the bear. is completed in ink and paint, it comes here to the camera department to be photographed. Well, all 200,000 of them. All 200,000, one at a time. Put one down, take a picture of it, take it off, put the next one down, take a picture of it. Oh, I don't quite get that. Let me show you with Donald. I'll put Donald down here, mm -hmm. take a picture of him. Yes. Take it off, put the next Donald down, Take a picture of him. But this still doesn't move. Well, let me put Donald, the next one, down on top of him. Now, you see the difference between their feet? Yes. Just a slight bit of difference, but the camera picks that up. Oh. I, I still don't understand. Okay, remember the old flip books that you used to get in the Cracker Jack box? Yes. Where you'd flip them and you'd see each individual drawing. It looked like it was moving. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what we're doing basically. We're taking each one of those pictures individually. And when you see it on the screen, they move. Oh, I see. Do I? Yeah. Oh. Uh huh. Wow. 
one more very important step before we're finished. It's called dubbing. This is the process used to add music and sound effects to the picture. Where is your basic bear fight? It's 50% music, 50% effects. It plays well enough the way it is, but there are different ways to go. You know, one approach would be to let the dog growls and the bear growls kind of carry the action there. And, you know, try playing the music down just a little bit. Why can't we play it two ways and then see where we really want to go with it? Yeah, fine, okay, well, we'll do it once uh, with mainly effects, and then we'll go back and we'll do it once mainly with music, and just put the effects in where you actually see something large and commanding on camera. Okay. Well, we'll give it to you there. We'll back it up and do it again. All right, sure. good. While the studio is completing production on the Fox and the Hound, teams of artists are developing the next project, the Black Cauldron. Before starting the animation for the Black Cauldron, layout artist Don Griffith has to decide how the characters will move within a scene. Oh, the quick cuts are better, Art, because that'll give you excitement and it'll uh, make the thing move. He functions like a camera, designing all the different angles, the close-ups and long shots that give the flat, two-dimensional drawings a feeling of depth. Then, background artist Jim Coleman brings these layout drawings to life by creating a world for the characters to inhabit, a place for them to live and move in. By this stage, the story outline has been decided on, and here's where I come in. They're searching for the right voices for the various characters. So before reading for the part of Island Me, I met the men who created her, and they helped me to understand her. Well, she's a princess, but we think that she has characteristics that are going to make her different from the others that we've done in the past. And, uh, well, you can you see it here on the uh, model. I can see that they're both the same girl, but they're, it's like they're different aspects of the same girl. Uh, yes, uh, Ellen Lee has a very spunky quality, but at the same time, she's very charming and very appealing. And she, she seems very sure of herself, too. Oh, yeah. And she seems quite cross as if she's ticking him off. That's right, right. So, Island Me and Terran come from very, very different backgrounds. She's a princess, and he's a farm boy. He's an assistant pig keeper to this little character right here, little Henwin. Oh, he's... Oh, he's absolutely enchanting. Now, who does he remind me of? Me. <laughs> That's good, no, because that she's a girl. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the role we had in mind. <laughs> Animation is a continuing process. The young artists of today can draw from the wealth of past experience and bring their own contributions to new projects, like the Black Cauldron. Although Walt Disney didn't invent animation, he and his artists elevated it to a level unparalleled in the world of film. Today, dedicated young artists ensure that the rich legacy that he left will continue to enchant and entertain us. I'll never forget that tour Walt took me on 21 years ago, and the twinkle in his eye when he told me that the only limit to animation is your imagination. After all, he said, how else can you see an elephant fly? <laughs> 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 <laughs>